We're going to look at um, some properties of angles on parallel lines. Now, parallel lines are lines like these here, which are always exactly the same distance apart from each other. So, for example, lines like that, those aren't parallel lines because they're not exactly the same distance apart from each other all the time, right? In fact, they get wider and wider apart, whereas the parallel lines stay the same distance apart. Okay, so that's our first thing we need is the parallel lines, staying the same distance apart. And parallel lines are indicated by a little arrow like that, or you could say for C here, a double arrow, right? That just indicates that the lines are parallel. Now we're going to have a look at parallel lines that are cut by another line. So they are cut by another line, and this other line that they are cut by is given a very fancy name, which is a, it's called a transversal. So transversal, sorry, just that R is very untidy. So transversal is the name we give to this line here that cuts through those two other lines. All right, now we've got our vocab out the way. Let's have a look at our first property. Let's have a look at these two angles here. So we're going to look at this angle and this angle. Can you see that they are both in the same position in relation to the parallel lines? They're above a parallel line to the right of the transversal. This one is above the parallel line to the right of the transversal. And so these kind of angles we call corresponding because they sit in the same place relative to the parallel lines in the transversal, above and to the right, above and to the right. These other ones here on this side are also corresponding because they sit in the same place, above and to the left, above and to the left of the transversal, right? Above the parallel line to the left, above the parallel line to the right. You could also have other corresponding, say like here, this one, and this one would be corresponding angles because, again, sitting in the same place, below the parallel line to the right, below the parallel line to the right of the transverse. Okay, so that's what we mean by corresponding. They're sitting kind of in the same place relative to the parallel lines. So let's have a look at these two corresponding angles, the blue and the green one, in this case here. Have a look what happens as we change the size of the, the, the where, where the transversal lies. Can you see that just moving this transversal here, as it moves, so the blue gets bigger, and as the blue gets bigger, so the green gets bigger, as the green gets smaller, so the blue gets smaller. Have a look here at this one. These are also corresponding. Um, here, these two are also corresponding. Let's just move it a little more slowly. Can you see, as you're moving this transversal, as it moves, it makes this green one smaller, but it's also pushing in the same direction, making the blue one smaller, because they're basically in the same place relative to the straight line and the transversal. However you change the green one will change the blue one in the same way. And so what you see is these corresponding angles remain the same size as each other, no matter where you put this transversal. Same story here, no matter where you put the transversal, look on, looking on the left, no matter where you put the transversal, this blue and this green will be the same size. So corresponding angles are going to be equal. And as I said, corresponding, you could also have, say, for example, this angle here and this angle here. They are also corresponding angles and they will also be equal. Doesn't matter where you put it on the transversal, where you put the transversal. And another pair of corresponding angles could be these ones here, right? This one and this one, right? Because they're below the parallel line to the left of the transversal, those two blue ones. Both are below to the left. And those also, as you move the transversal, doesn't matter where you put it, are going to be equal to each other. Now, a way people say that you can 
recognize um, the corresponding angles, a nice little fun way is to say that you can always see an F with them. They're tucked into the same place on the F. So if you draw this F, can you see this funny F, capital letter F, right? It's looking like that. Can you see that you've got your corresponding angles are in the same place. Now in this case here, you will still have that F. It's just going to be an upside down F and you've got your corresponding angles in the same place on this one. The next set of angles we're going to look at on parallel lines are angles we call alternate angles. Now, although we saw corresponding angles in an F pattern, your alternate angles are going to be tucked into the corner of a Z. Now, your Z can either be nicely normal way round Z, or in fact, it can be like this one, a back to front Z. In other words, it could look like that back to front Z and your alternate angles are tucked into the corners and sometimes like you'll see with this one your Z is kind of spread out but it's still a Z nonetheless and those are your alternate angles now if you have a look at the little videos carefully you will see that again no matter where we put the transversal your alternate angles remain the same so have a look there. Can you see, as the green gets smaller, so the blue one gets smaller. Have a look at this one where we've actually got the, the sizes labelled in. And as you move the green and the blue, you will see, as you move the transversal, the green and the blue remain exactly the same size as each other. So your alternate angles on parallel lines are equal to each other. The last um, angles that we're going to have a look at are angles called co-interior angles on parallel lines. And these are typified by a sort of, well, if you want to sort of see them quickly and easily, they're sort of typified by a funny sort of U shape. So you can see here, there's the U shape and your co-interior angles are on the inside of the U. There's your U shape and your co-interior are on the inside of the U. Okay, so what happens with co-interior is different. Have a look at how this works. Observe this little video on the left and see what happens with your co-interiors. They don't stay the same size. In fact, can you see, as this blue angle here gets bigger, so the green one gets smaller. Let's look at it again. We're going to make this blue one get smaller and smaller. And you can see that basically as this line, your transversal pushes to make this smaller, it's going to allow this green one to get bigger. Have a look carefully now as this video goes again. Can you see, the, as the blue gets smaller, the green gets bigger. As the green starts to get smaller, the blue gets bigger. Let's have a look at the other set of co-interiors, and you'll see the same pattern happen. As your green gets smaller, your blue gets bigger. As your blue gets smaller, your green gets bigger. But at any point, they'll add up to 180. So like we've got here, this is 40, 140 and 40 adds up to 180. Doesn't matter where we stop it. Here we've got 90 and 90 adding up to 180. Or here, 61 and 119 add up to 180. So our co-interior angles, unlike the other two which are equal, these add up to 180. Okay, so let us um, open your, your uh, key concepts book and just make sure we've got the right idea of what corresponding co-interior and alternate angles are. So let uh, you need to put in for me all the corresponding angles that are equal to each other, all the co-interior angles that add up to 180, and then the alternate angles. For corresponding, remember, you're looking for the F, and it can be a forwards F, a backwards F, an upside down F, or an upside down and backwards F, and your, co your corresponding are always 
just tucked in like that into your F's. Your co-interior you're looking for, either a forwards or a backwards U, and your alternate you're looking for a forwards or backwards Z. Pause the video and do that now. Okay, let's check that you got them all. Let's focus on our corresponding angles first. We've got these red ones are corresponding because here is the F, right? And they just tuck underneath in the F. Then we have the blue ones, which is the back to front F. So if you look at the black to front, back to front F, you get the blue ones. Now we're going to do our F upside down and we go there there and we get our green ones and then we go upside down and back to front and we get our orange ones so there are four pairs of corresponding angles and those are equal to each other our co-interior remember we are looking for the u and these are very easy right boom boom right but these are not equal to each other they add up to 180 degrees and then lastly our alternate we're looking for the z to look at the red ones there's your z right so this and this are equal and then our back to front z there that and that the blue ones are equal so our alternate angles here they are equal Okay, let's have a look at one example to finish off. Imagine we've got a set of parallel lines and the we know that this angle up here is 70. We can in fact find all the other angles using our angle facts that we know. So straight away we could using corresponding angles. So look, here's my upside down F, right? So upside down F tells me this angle here is going to be also equal to 70 and the reason for this one is because of um, corresponding angles on parallel lines okay so let's just quickly look at the the, the uh, things i'm using i abbreviate corresponding to cor that stands for angle and that's how i indicate parallel lines right you say the two lines are parallel by just using these two vertical stripes so that 70 i got by saying corresponding angles on parallel lines now here you go i can see i've got my u here so i can use co-interior and i can say this one is 110 this will be co-interior angles on parallel lines now hopefully you also saw immediately actually i could have just used what i had in my pre in the from the previous work which was that these two are adjacent on a straight line so this could have i could have got this as 110 by just going with adjacent on a straight line so following up with that idea can you see from there to there i can just use vertically opposite because 110 110 vertically opposite and 70 this one will be 70 as well because of vertically opposite all right let's go back to using some of my parallel line stuff can you see my back to front z here my back to front z here will help me get that this is 110 so there i was using alternate angles on parallel lines and just while I'm busy filling in all my reasoning, this was vertically opposite I used to get that. And this one I also just used vertically opposite. Again, you could probably have just seen that 110 by just seeing adjacent angles on a straight line. So let's fill in the rest. Vertically opposite will give me that this is 70 here. And vertically opposite will give me... Uh, me write that properly that this here is 110 vertically opposite and vertically opposite so these are with vertically opposite i used that to get that fact and this one i used vertically opposite 